Hello, I'm Steve Benison and welcome to my Christmas special tutorial. I've prepared four cake designs for you and I've focused on doing a smaller cake if there was just one person and you want to make the cake for um, a couple. You can also scale up the design if you would like to and use a larger cake. The cakes that I've made, um, they're all here ready for the designs to go on the top. And I'd like to share with you um, some of those designs. So if we'd like to come over to the work surface, um, we can show you, or I can show you in a little bit more detail. Okay, so the paste that I'm using um, is a Mexican paste. It's a nice firm paste. And also as well, it doesn't um, absorb moisture once it's dry. So there's less chance of things um, collapsing. So rolling the paste out with a little bit of vegetable shortening. And it's important as well that the paste doesn't stick to the board. So lift that during the time that you're rolling out. And also as well, make sure your paste isn't too thick. So just checking on that. Now I'm going to use um, the stag cutter. So I'm just putting a little bit of Trex vegetable shortening over the edge there. And then place the stag cutter onto a non-slip mat and then place the paste over the top. Just tap that into place and then roll over the top. Just taking your rolling pin backwards and forwards so that you can see the outline from the cutter. And then if you use a scriber, you can just take those pieces out there and then just knead that together. I'm going to use a pallet knife like that just to clean up the edge of the cutter. So I've got no little furry bits which you can sometimes um, get on the edges. So if I turn that over onto the board, just tap it gently. Down like that, so you can gently pull through your stag like that. Now I'm going to place that onto a piece of um, kitchen paper so that we can um, gild it with some luster powder. So I'm going to use um, some gold. This is um, super gold. And I just want to brush that over the um, stag like this. Make sure it goes on all those places. And also as well, because your paste is fresh, the powder will stick to it better than you allow it to become dry and then do it afterwards. Although if you do it afterwards, if you mix the powder with some alcohol and then brush that over, that, that will work fine as well. So we just do that over there. And then we want to have um, a board. I'm using a piece of plywood or you could use a piece of foam sponge. Just something absorbent really so that it can dry flat. So we'll slide the stag gently onto the drying board and then just position the antlers how you want them to be and check on the bottom part. Now that needs to dry for about 12 hours depending on the humidity um, where you live but um, here are some ones that I made earlier and they've dried now so we've got that one here and if you want to you can um, just trim off the bottom bit so you've got the legs more exposed so you can have your stag like that as well so the next stage, the next thing that we're going to do are the um, spruce leaves um, and I'm using this um, 
leaf garland cutter. So I'm going to get my paste ready. So to make the um, fern, I'm using a nice aqua colour. So it's a bit like eucalyptus and a sea green, but it's really, really nice. So I'm rolling the paste fairly thin, like that. Now, with the beauty of this cutter, in one of the designs I'm going to show you later on, I'll be using all the leaves, but so that you can cut out all the leaves in one go. But for this cake, what I want to do is just cut this into strips, like that. Just place those on the board, how I want them. Just pop that there. And then this is a cereal packet. It's like a wax paper, so I've just cut that up. Or you could use a document wallet um, and cut that into smaller pieces. So using your cutter here, what I'm going to do is just place that over the top. So I can then cut out all of my ferns, or in this case, it's going to be the spruce like a blue spruce and then we just take out those bits like that and then if you place them onto um, a cell pad like this so we'll get some more of those done so keep using your paste like that and cut out all the pieces that you need at least um, 12 of those. So we take that away. And it's quite nice as well if you varied the shade of these so you had some lighter and some darker ones. So we just take those out there. Now I will carry on making those leaves, but I just want to show you the next stage of what we need um, to do. So we're going to use the veining tool like this and if you hold that above each of the sections and just pull that down and then on the end piece as well do that so we can just turn that round do the same on that side so you're getting the effect so it looks like um, a blue spruce. If you make them wider um, and mark them differently it will look like a fern. So what I'm then going to do is use the stitching wheel just to add another bit of interest to that to go down the center. So with your piece of cereal paper you then pop those on there like that. And then when you've got them all cut out, if you put them onto a piece of kitchen paper, like this. So getting your preparation done is key. And then I'm going to use um, a super pearl. So that's like a white snow. And then I'm going to cut that with a flat brush and I'm going to go across the bows of the spruce like that. Now what I've done is I've used a lock seal bag and I've prepared all of my pieces like this and I've done some darker ones as well. So they can go in there like that and they will remain pliable um, for a good two or three days until you're ready to decorate your cake. But um, putting them in there like this allows you to prepare in advance and then you're ready to put them onto your cake. So I'm going to put um, a band of edible ribbon around the base of the cake. So I'm using some modeling paste, which I've kneaded. And I'm just gonna roll this on a little bit of sugar, like that. So if I just flatten it across like this, 
so we can roll it thinner. It's just going to add some texture and contrast against the, um, the side of the cake. So just lift that up a little bit more. A bit more sugar, I think. Just a touch on the top. Smooth it over. And then just ensure that we've got a reasonably thin piece of paste. But I want it to be thick enough, so it's probably about two to three mils in thickness, like there. I want it to be thick enough to be able to take the texture I'm going to put on the top. So I'll just roll across there. Then I'm going to use this roller, which is raw silk. It's got a nice raw silk texture on it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the uh, icing sugar on there. And then what I'm going to do is start putting the pressure on as I roll across the paste like this. And I'm going to cut one straight edge along there. And I want to have the band probably about three centimeters deep. So if I make a little mark there and I do this along the paste like that and at the other end together you can use um, a ruler so we line them all up remove the surplus paste like that. There. Then I'm going to use some white super pearl powder just to brush over the ribbon so that will highlight the texture. So I've brushed all the way along. Now what I want to do is just take the palette knife and slide that underneath and then lift one end of the paste and then start to roll this up into a Swiss roll shape. So just bringing that forward and then turn that on its edge. Now with the board, the best way to clean that is just taking a little bit of the vegetable shortening on a piece of kitchen paper and just rub that over there because you don't want luster powder everywhere. So just do that. Work that in a little bit more on that side. So what I'm going to do is just to place that onto another small cake board and then rather than using water I'm going to use some of the shortening um, to brush where I want to put the ribbon on. So this is just a thin coating and what it does, it allows you to put the, rib the ribbon on at the bottom and then if you do need to lift it, as if you were using water it would stick immediately but this allows you to peel the ribbon away so you can get the position where you want. So we'll just work that around a little bit more there. Okay. And then taking the ribbon like that, what I'm going to do is just offer it up to the side of the cake like that. Making sure I've got it at the bottom. And then as you unwind your paste like that you can just take it 
around the bottom of your cake like that just taking care that you don't pull the ribbon out and stretch it so I'm just letting it fall back on its own weight there and just lift it again there so we've got the join and I'm just using the palette knife there make sure it's at the bottom of your cake on there and just take your palette knife I'm just going to trim that first piece underneath and then the second piece over there where I'm going to have the join I'm just going to use the palette knife like that and push that together just use the edge of the palette knife now what I want to do is just check that I've got the height all the way around even and just to, on there. Now what you can do with the roller as well, you can just take that off the handle like that and you can just use that to push against the side of your cake so you don't damage the design that you've put on there. So I'm just going in the base there. looks really nice as well if you do this on a wedding cake if you just want a minimalistic so you've got a difference between the textures just make sure that's there I'm just checking around it's easier if you do this put it onto a higher turntable so you can actually see the um, the depth of your band and make sure it's horizontal along that side. But that's um, putting the band of ribbon around the base. So we'll just clear down a moment. So to assemble um, our first cake, I've got some royal icing in a bag. Um, I haven't cut or haven't put a, a tube in the end. All I'm going to do is just snip a little bit off of the end there. So let the icing come through. And I've got some cold water and a paintbrush and a Dresden tool and a little palette knife. So with our um, pieces that we've prepared, they're still um, pliable. So what I'm going to do is put just a little bit of royal icing on the top and down the side so we can do that. And then we can overlap the next one. So just put one there, pop that on. So it's still pliable. And then with your paintbrush, if you get any of the icing that comes out, you just take your brush and take that away. Just use a little damp piece of kitchen paper like that so you've got those pieces removed so you can interchange that and I'm going to put just a deeper one there as well so on that side down there it's always difficult trying to do it at the angle for the camera but um, we'll, we'll get there and then let's go around and take those bits out. And I'm going to carry on all the way around the top of the cake with those pieces of the spruce. So we'll carry on there at an angle down the side. And where you can, if you can just get them to interlock a little bit like that and then take those bits out. It's quite a nice contrast as well with having those darker ones 
in there. So I'm going to work all the way around now um, and complete that one. So nearly back to the uh, beginning. So just adding the last two. So we've got that one there. And if you just use the paintbrush so we can lift that one just up a little bit there. And you can see on the top there where it's still pliable um, it can dry to the, um, the shape of the cake and that gives it this rather nice um, looking variation in, in the depth. So we'll put that one there and then so we can lift that one up like that. So we've got those um, added all the way around. Just check over as well with the, the paintbrush if there's any bits of icing that you want to remove. Um, do that. So that's that bit done. Now we've got to think about putting the stag on the top. So I'm just going to move those to one side. Okay, so to put the stag on the top, I've just got some um, modeling paste which I'm going to form into like a long sausage which is the about the length of the base of the stag like that and then I'm going to just make a little indentation along the top like that where I want it to go and using a little bit of water just on the top of the cake there That on and open it out and then if you want to just smooth that down around the edges so it looks a bit like um, a snow drift and we do that On the bottom and there and then make sure that's deep enough for it to, to go into. Then I'm just going to take a little bit of the royal icing and pipe that around there and on that bit. A bit like brush embroidery but just dampening the brush so that you can uh, bring that down so it looks like the snow. Dampen that a little bit again there. So all of that is done. Then I'm going to put a little bit of the royal icing down the middle. Like that. Make sure your hands are dry before you pick up your um, stag. Now I've got it onto a piece of uh, the tissue there. So what we want to do is to pop that in there. Don't put too much pressure on at this stage because what we want then to do is to bring the base of the paste over like that. And then just turn it round the other side carefully. Do the same, so push it in there. Now if we turn it back you can have a look um, with your paintbrush. So if you want to take any bits of the snow off at the bottom there and I would just let that icing dry off a little bit and then put a little piece of foam sponge either side until the um, icing is thoroughly set. So that's our first cake, our blue spruce with our golden stag. 
So now we've got our first Christmas cake done, um, the blue spruce um, with the gold stag. So I'm gonna pop this away um, to one side and then we'll be ready to start on the next cake. So be back soon. Thank you. 